Hello and welcome to another episode of Golden Nuggets with Sylvia Eldawi. Today, I have the pleasure of being joined by the real estate guru, real spelled R-W-E-L and R-E-A-L, <laughs> real estate guru, Alessia Shiglova, the CEO of Dasha Real Estate. Welcome to Golden Nuggets. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank uh, you for we can't me. wait to hear your Golden Nuggets mm -hmm. on two particular topics we're going to go down. And that is women in real estate, because today is International Women's Day. Um, and we both have our opinions about that, very <laughs> strong, maybe perhaps controversial opinions. Um, and also, we want, by the end of this episode, everybody listening to have a clue about how to create viral reels or get your social media working for you. So welcome to the show, Thank Alessia. You so much. Thank, Thank you for you. being here. <laughs> um, but before we do that, we just want to get to know you a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Of course, I always do my research about my guests. And um, of course, I know you personally as well. But I didn't know that you studied human, you did a degree in human nutrition. So what were you supposed to be when you grew up? I was up? supposed to be a doctor. <laughs> Okay, and that didn't happen because... Because I, I f if I went to the UK, that's what I should have done. Mm. You straight away go into med school and you become a doctor. But I decided to go to Canada and you have to do a pre-med there, which is such as, you know, biology, human nutrition. I went into dietetics and that was around five years of studying. And by that time, I kind of felt homesick. It was a lot. I and didn't, cold. Uh, yeah, I didn't particularly like Canada. After mm. Dubai, it's, uh, it's a shock. And the, the distance between me and the family and the time difference was so much. So when I came home, uh, my mom started the business. She said, why don't you try real estate? And if you don't like it, you can always go back to school. Yeah. And once I started it, I you think there's no stop. going back. Yeah. <laughs> um, so let's you. OK, so as a real estate agent mm -hmm. with a nutritional background and, you know, all real estate agents are on the go. Um, is there any kind of golden nuggets you can give them about like nutritional advice for agents <laughs> on the go? It's been a long time since I started uh, <laughs> studying is nutrition. There, is there anything that kind of we should know that you're like, God, this is a little known fact? Well, the known fact in Dubai for sure is meal delivery services. Mm. I think that's the easiest to make sure you eat healthy. But then, of course... For me, for example, there's other tricks that I like using, such as intermittent fasting, okay. you know, going low carb. For me, that helps. But I think every individual has a different approach to fitness lifestyle, they believe. So it's about finding what works for you and staying consistent with that versus, you know, the latest trend or whatever. Yeah. And what snacks should an agent always have in their car? Snacks? Low carb. Mm -hmm. uh, like nuts. I, I now carry around eggs, avocado. Like a boiled egg. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> I grill them on the boot of the car because it's well, so easy. hot. Yeah. Uh, fry them. Uh, you know, Eddie Abu, he's mm -hmm. like so viral in UK now. Mm -hmm. He's like so about low carb and clean foods. Yeah. A lot of people are following him now. So yeah, it's all about eggs, meats, like low carb. What about those little protein balls? I like those. That's you what like I'm them. having. For me, for like, I really don't like them. It causes yeah. me like to break out. So you see, oh. everybody is so different. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just about finding what works for you. Okay. So you got into real estate. No um, crappy jobs before real estate. My first job, I was 16. I was a waitress in a pizza restaurant. Me too. Yeah. And I not because I wanted to. I told my mom, I said, mom, I really want a job for the mm -hmm. summer. And in Dubai, they don't really hire when you're below 18. Mm -hmm. So they managed to get me a job like in a restaurant that their friends mm -hmm. owned. And it was a really big eye opener. I actually work for Pizza Hut. For, I think I only made it a weekend. I don't think oh I didn't God, last no. very long. I lasted a month, <laughs> and I was responsible for like topping up the salad bar and pizza. Mm -hmm. and, but yeah, gosh. Okay. I, and then I also modeled, and then in Canada when I was studying nutrition, I actually worked like as an intern nutritionist in a hospital. Yeah. So and then real estate. So then you came back from Canada into Dasha Real Estate, mm -hmm. your mum's company, mm -hmm. and. You were running it by 2008? Yeah, because she decided to retire. The global crisis happened, mm -hmm. and it was a lot. It was very stressful, and yeah, basically she said, try it. And it was very challenging coming from a completely different background and health uh, into business and being so young. I was 21 years old. It was definitely a challenge. People also were looking at me like within the company, and like you know, they, they didn't respect me. Mm. It's like a young girl came with no experience. But then I proved to them that I can do it. And two years later, I met my husband through real estate. And 
he joined eventually mm -hmm. that year, and I think that really, really helped me. I think having people around you who you can trust on the same mission as you uh, brings a lot of value to the business. That must be hard working with your husband, living with your husband. <laughs> Have you ever punished him at work for something he did at home or punished <laughs> him at home for something he did at work? No, honestly, we have such a great relationship. We've been together now for almost 14 years. And I think this is what makes it work. We have the utmost respect for each other. We don't really argue unless it's something so petty. And what happens at home is so separate from what happens at work. So That's I think good. we have a really good divide. And also because we have three offices and totally different responsibilities, it's not like I'm stuck sitting with him all the okay, time. You know, we don't enough. even really see each other that much. So we want to talk about women in real estate. And you and I kind of have this mutual hatred of the isolation of women. I mean, you won an award, mm -hmm. which I'm sure you're very proud of yesterday, uh, influential woman in real estate. And I could see your face as you were going up to collect it. You were happy, but it was still at the same time, it was like, mm, I don't like being singled out for being a woman. So I've been doing this since 2008 which is, I don't know how many years now, 16. Mm -hmm. And for 16 years, the only question that I get asked in interviews is how does it feel to be a woman in real estate, a male-dominated industry, etc.? For 16 years, yeah. like we need to change the narrative, we need to change the question. First of all, there's much more female agents even than male ones mm -hmm. in Dubai and maybe many more uh, uh, successful than men. Yeah, exactly, yeah. they're very successful. Mm -hmm. And it's not like we're in sports where you know it's wrestling or football or whatever. Yeah. There's no disadvantage between a man and a woman mentally to be a real estate agent. Yeah. So, so I, feel like, I feel like if they're going to give an award to top five women in real estate, they should be doing then the same thing to men. And then it should just actually, it doesn't make sense. You may as well just have a top, five leaders. Inf leaders or top yeah, five influential, influential people, people, exactly. not men or women. Because let's break those down because you just said a lot. <laughs> you said a lot. So one, there's probably more, well, better female agents than the male well, agents. Or we have I wouldn't say that, but female agents are just as good as male agents. Yeah. Good female agents are just mm -hmm. as good as good male agents. Mm -hmm. There is no divide. There is no disadvantage whatsoever. There are advantages, though, of being a woman. Mm -hmm. I think um, one, let's say if the majority of decision makers are men, they would and correct me if you think I'm wrong, they would uh, rather do business with a woman than a man. So if you've got a male buyer, he'd rather buy from a woman than a man. I don't know. Agree or disagree? No, very neutral because okay. it depends. For example, if it's a family, like the woman it really depends on the woman agent because mm -hmm. there are some women agents who female agents who don't portray themselves professionally and we'll talk you about know what you uh, you know what i'm talking about mm -hmm. so if i'm a family so me and my husband let's say go to buy a property and such an agent shows up i would be uncomfortable yeah if she's got her as a family exactly out and, and so like my husband mm -hmm. like drooling over her as yeah. an example but then, for example, if a male agent comes up who is super professional or a female agent who is super professional, mm -hmm. it does not matter. Yeah. OK. So. All right. Well, let's say if you've got um, let's say a man is looking to list a property with an area specialist, if they have the choice of a man or a woman, they might be more inclined to go for the woman. I feel like we should not even be talking about it because then we can go deeper. We should, we should go into nationalities. True. We can become so oh, racist we we and have so <laughs> discriminating mm -hmm. against things such as gender, nationality, language, etc. Height, short, tall. Exactly. <laughs> fat, yeah. skinny, yeah, beautiful, yeah. ugly. Like I really feel like we should stop this topic overall mm -hmm. in the industry and we should stop singling women out for such awards. And especially or before there was a cover, female leaders in the industry. Let's focus on leadership overall. And for the awards that you were discussing, it's the first award that's called out. Yeah. Meaning what? It's the least important. Mm. Because what's the last award? The biggest company, the best agency. That's always the last award. Yeah. The grand finale. Yeah, the grand finale. So the first award that they give out, not necessarily mm -hmm. in that event, in many other events, is the female leadership yeah. award. It's kind of like the sympathy award or something. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a slap on the face. Yeah. And you had, you had, I could no, see I that. No, I was happy, I was happy, but like, they, they need to stop. Mm. 
the portals, the magazines, the people who are interviewing you, that question needs to stop. Can we stop asking that question? Being a woman in real estate is the same as being a man in real estate. Right? Or in any other industry. Yeah. Is there top five female doctors at words? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. True. There's True. no such thing. Yeah. If you've made it to be a doctor, mm -hmm. you went through med school, they will not single you out as the best female doctor. Come on. Agreed. Okay. So <laughs> let, let's talk about, let's continue to talk about that because I think this could be really inspirational mm -hmm. for, for, for some women. And actually, some men are going to want to hear this as well. They're, it's going to be very refreshing for them to hear. Because, I mean, for example, last year, I went to an in International Women's Day event and it was all about kind of how it's so difficult being a woman and you have to juggle this and... Um, also based in Dubai. Yeah. Um, and balance this and we have to support each other and, you know, and women make up 2% of leadership and it's actually like, it's not the men's fault. If I'm an amazing agent and I'm making so much money, I do not want to be a manager. Mm -hmm. Makes I sense. will open my company or I'll, I will continue being an amazing agent and making lots of money. Why do they need the extra responsibility? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's not about being in leadership. I feel like if you're, if you're successful, you have a name for yourself, you have mm. your brand, you're closing deals, that's all that matters. Mm. But I feel like International Women's Day in particular is kind of like, uh, it's sort of like a platform for women to complain to the men. Like, look, can we just be heard for this one day and then we'll shut up for the other 364 days? When actually, it's, uh, I believe it's our problem. It's, you know, there, there is no glass ceiling. There's a glass ceiling that we put on top of our own heads. Not that it's imposed by men. Men would love to have women on the board. They would love to see more women in leadership, but it's us that's stopping ourselves. Or I think maybe if they're not educated enough or driven enough, some people, that's where maybe one candidate would get the job and the other candidate wouldn't. Mm -hmm. But there's that stat as well about um, women applying for jobs mm -hmm. versus men. So a man will apply for a job if he only ticks six of the requirements, but a woman, unless she ticks all of the requirements, she won't apply. I don't know how it is in other industries, but 100% in real estate, that's not the case, mm -hmm. especially if you're going to be an agent. Mm. Or how come there's many female leaders in roles such as marketing? There's mm. more marketing managers and who are HR. female and HR mm. versus men. That's also these, leadership positions. Yeah, but these are like feely, emotionally kind of vibey roles. But then fine, then maybe just men and women are different. Let's mm -hmm. be honest, mm -hmm. physiologically. But also, could it be that the women are not pushing themselves too far career-wise because part of them or the little girl inside of them is banking on, oh, I'm going to get married and be a mom one day and I don't need to worry. Maybe it's I'll find a rich husband or something. Could there be a, an element of that? I think family values are super important, mm -hmm. especially in Middle East. We have a very strong family culture, which I love Middle East for. So I think there's nothing wrong with a woman wanting to have a family. Because genetically, this is what we're, we're meant to do. to do. We mm -hmm. are supposed to be taking care of our children. Why mm -hmm. our nanny is taking care of our children? Yeah, yeah. I'm not proud that my son is being raised by uh, my nanny. Mm -mm. So I think actually if, if a woman has the drive to take care of the house and be at home, I think it's, it's a huge job and massive respect. Mm -mm. So of course women and men are different, as I said. Genetically, physiologically, mm -hmm. mentally, etc. Mm -hmm. But the question when it comes to real estate I feel like we should not be singled out. If we, uh, we are already in the job, we are successful, mm -hmm. we do not need an award for being a woman yeah. in this industry. And you, why do you think there's... Is it purely because they don't want the responsibility of being a sales manager or progressing because they're making so much money as an agent? It doesn't make sense. And plus, there's mm. many women leaders. There's mm. Yesterday, I think five of, of mm -hmm. us got the award, but there's many, many others who yeah. didn't. So I think there's many, many female company owners who are doing yeah. it. Um, so the, I think the only problem is that for the past 16 years, we're asking this question and us as women, we're answering it. Okay, so should we, if we stop answering it... See, now we're sitting and talking about <laughs> right. it. Right, we shouldn't be we need talking to stop. about it. Exactly. Okay. The more we focus on singling women out and giving them a separate award, the more we are creating the divide. Absolutely. There's no gender yeah. inequality if you're a doctor, if you're a lawyer or anything else. So why should there be a gender inequality in real estate? Okay, so we've got to stop it. Stop the award. Stop the discussion. Stop even discussing it. 
uh, cakes on International Women's Day allowed? Cupcakes? <laughs> Why is there a Men's International Day? No. You see? Scrap International Women's and Day. And I love, I love the award of influential people mm -hmm. in real estate. And for example, if they started with that and they put up five influential people who are active on social media, who really inspire and empower people in the industry. I get people meet me on the street or in the awards saying that, Alicia, I am in real estate because of you. Mm. You've changed my life. You've inspired me. Not because I'm a woman. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure Firas from FAM, the same. Mm. So these are the people who should be getting an award for the contribution they give to the industry. Mm. Not because I'm a woman. Yeah. And you will value that more, winning that award. Along if you the men. Up against that. Right. So it's time to put us, we don't need separate camps. We don't, it's not a sport. Real estate is not a sport. Exactly. We don't need a women's um, team and a men's team. We are all one. Let's scrap International Women's Day. Let's scrap the questions about being a woman in real estate. And let's scrap the female awards. <laughs> and let's scrap <laughs> the female awards. Another thing I really don't like is the separate female podcast or female shows. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm trying to say? Like you would have Cityscape. Yeah. Uh, prop tech, et cetera. And then all of a sudden, an all-female uh, panel. panel. Yeah. Why? Yeah. yeah, to raise awareness. And actually, I was um, a moderator on the International Property Show last uh, week. And I was moderating one of those panels, Women in Real Estate. I refuse I to attend such them. a panel. No, I will not. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. was invited recently to a panel. Uh, there's an event happening. And I said, if it's going to be an all-female panel for women in, in uh, real estate, I'm not go going. Mm -hmm. And on that, it was quite funny because Farah Ann from Bay Tukum, she was on the panel and we had a pre-call and she said, Sylvia, I've got a question for you. Why are there no men on this panel? And I was like, good question. She's like, if we're going to talk about women in real estate and so on, shouldn't we be involving a man or men and get their opinion, get their input? And I was like, you know what? Let me see if I can convince any man to join the women's panel. But it's, it Did you manage? Uh, no, I couldn't at the last minute, but it was a very valid point. Why, okay, if we're going to have, if we have to have this discussion, let's not let it be just a conversation between the women, you know, 100%. complaining about stuff and the guys are just kind of sitting and watching. And this morning I did a, a, a speech for International Women's Day, a big agency, and one common question was asked by the men is like, why isn't there an International Man's Day? And I was like, absolutely, you should be asking that question. If we're going to have one for women, same as there's Mother's 100%. Day and Father's Day, there should be an International Man Man's Day. Yeah, and uh, Property Finder started a program called She for She. Mm. So it's about women mentoring other women. And one of the things they did mention to us in the program, there are men. Mm -hmm. So for us to drive such a program, men need to be involved. Same mm -hmm. thing like the, the panel you just discussed. But how comfortable would a man, so one of the men were involved as mentors or as mentees? Like they were, they were helping, no, they were helping with marketing and oh, things like back, that. Uh, speeches, okay. yeah. yeah. Um, also, once again, Property Find, I don't know if I should say it. A, a company also did like a day for education mm. and then all the panels were men only mm. and the panels, felt so stiff. Yeah. Women bring a different kind of energy to, to the panel. atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. So when you have a panel and it's mixed, you know, a nice mix between females and males, mm. it becomes much more engaging. It mm. becomes much more interesting and informative. Yeah. And that's funny you should say that because I'm part of a kind of founders network, um, 2469 uh, community. And they started a podcast last year. And the first few episodes, they had four guests per episode. The first few episodes were all men. And then the women in the group started piping up saying, why is it all men? And they didn't want to say, but it was, the answer was, because y'all didn't apply to be <laughs> in it. So it's like, we notice the distinction. We notice when we're missing, but we do nothing about actually getting involved in the first place. So invitations are not going to come. You have to put yourself out there. And that's what the guys are very good at doing. So we need to learn from that and pick up from that. Another thing that I picked up from the international uh, property show. So I was moderating the women's panel and I had another panel talking about um, digitizing real estate. So that one had um, uh, five men, one woman. Of course, the women's panel was all women. So I sent the exact same instructions to both groups. Please uh, write your bio, you know, 100 word bio for me to introduce you. 
please choose your availability or let me know your availability for a, a call um, before the panel session. And please select the questions that you would like to answer on the panel. I sent both emails at the same time with a deadline of Thursday mm -hmm. to both groups. The women followed the instructions to the T. They did it, they completed it, all done. The men, Thursday, Friday, I didn't hear from them, Saturday, nobody. And it's like, and I was looking at that and I was trying to analyze what is the difference here? And I was like, okay, first of all, the women have a sense of, we need to check boxes, we need to complete tasks. Whereas the men completely ignore, you may, they didn't even probably read the email. So I, that took me back. I was like, what's the difference? Okay, women are very thorough. Men perhaps might miss the attention to, de you know, maybe they don't have as much attention to detail. Then there wasn't any urgency from the men or they decided it's not important. Mm. So I feel like women, we probably are either too much perfectionist um, or prioritizing the wrong things, perhaps. I don't know. It was just I agree. Bizarre. Obviously, I have quite a large company and a nice mix of uh, females and males. And for sure, the females sometimes are much more attention to detail driven. Mm. But of course, there's also males who are as well. So yeah, yeah. And we're definitely that. overthinkers. So definitely. it's, um, <laughs> you know, that might actually hinder us that overthinking. Um, and going back to perfectionism, that leads me on to something that you do perfectly well. And that is your reels on Instagram. <laughs> okay, you are the real estate <laughs> guru. <laughs> and you have grown a massive following. You are very consistent with your reels. I just, I, we just want to absorb the, uh, the, the Alessia advice today. So come okay. on, drop your golden nuggets. So I started building my personal brand, I think in 2019. And this is why I'm so consistent with the reels, because that's the best way to grow and gain the following on Instagram. And it has been so instrumental to my success and uh, the success of my company. All right. Yeah. So how significant has it been in terms of like, is it mostly in terms of hiring agents or is it closing business? Yeah, so sometimes it's so difficult to put a value on it, but then I hear the stories from my agents. For example, when they call and they say, I'm calling from Dacia Real Estate, and they say, we know oh. Alessia, we yeah. follow her, we love her. Mm -hmm. And straight away, there's a connection and the trust. That's one thing. Or when they go to appointments, mm -hmm. they, there's very often my name is mentioned, which is really, really nice, creates the trust. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they call Dacia when they see the listings on Property Finder just because they remember the Interesting. brand. Interesting. I never thought about that, that you're not only are you kind of, elevating yourself, your own personal brand, but you're also adding credibility to your entire team. Exactly. And to the company. Mm. And the best way to grow your own company is through your personal brand. Yeah. It's very difficult to create a brand name just by, you know, by branding. If you add value as a person, it's, it's super significant. So that's clients. Then, of course, recruitment. Mm -hmm. Every time I meet our new starters, we don't mass hire, but we hire around 10 people a month. Mm -hmm. And they all say we're here because of you. Some because they've seen my video on YouTube. Some seen me on LinkedIn. Some on TikTok. Mm -hmm. Before TikTok never used to come into the equation. It used to be Instagram, Instagram, Instagram. Yeah. Now TikTok. And of course, other people say Instagram. And that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Because people spend a lot of money, thousands of dirhams, hundreds of thousands of dirhams to recruit. Yeah. Road shows, etc. But by producing one reel... You attract that can, let's say, that will have even 1,000 views. Mm -hmm. Imagine having 1,000 people here. That's a lot of people. True. Eyeballs. When you look on social media, like, oh, my reel got only 1,000 views, that's still a lot. A lot of views, yeah. And it's such an easier way to get yourself out there than networking, going to road shows, mm -hmm. and all that. And by being consistent, you get more and more and more eyeballs on yourself, trust, uh, sales, of course, clients mm -hmm. message me. We have this for sale. We want to buy, etc. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's 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 been amazing. Okay, and and you touched on something really important, kind of the personal brand versus the agency brand, because I feel in this day and age, we're we're moving away from that connection with brands, as in logos, company brands, moving more towards a connection with personal brands. So. How do you decide what goes on Dasha, for example, versus what goes on Alessia? Silly stuff, don't go on Dasha. Dasha <laughs> is still a brand, right? So serious, we try to keep yeah. things serious, more professional. While with my own 
personal brand, I can sometimes allow myself to do something silly, something that's not always related to real estate, mm. something that perhaps I find funny. And that also increases the audience that you, you, you show yourself to. Yeah. Because if I only post stuff about real estate, people who will follow me are only those who are interested in it. But if I start talking about Dubai, places to visit in Dubai, different things, you attract so many more people. Yeah. And then you, you will do, let's say, five posts uh, a week. Uh, one of them will be about Dubai in general, one about yourself, your personal life, one that's entertaining, mm -hmm. and another one that is salesy. And, and then you will, you will close. Because you actually, you gave me like a therapy session the other day, or a telling off, or a kind of, Sylvia, you need to post more fun reels, or, you know. People want to be entertained, mm -hmm. or they want to learn something. Yeah. But if your things are always boring, people talking, they sometimes don't know who you are, yeah. who your guest is. Mm -hmm. But when they see something funny, they engage and then they go into your profile yeah. and they start learning okay. more. So that's where my hang up comes mm -hmm. in, because I'm like, no, Alessia would, l you know, big respect for everything that you're doing. But for me, it's too cringy. I can't bring myself to do this. And what did you say? Uh, what did I say? <laughs> Get out of your comfort zone. I don't know. I was a bit tipsy <laughs> then. I don't remember what I said. <laughs> she was like, just do it. Just do it. Get out of your comfort zone. Um, the stuff that you like is not necessarily the stuff that everybody else likes. And there was a table of five of us. Mm -hmm. And two out of the five were like, no, I like it when you did your funny, silly stuff. And I'm like, really? And I your most that. watched video mm -hmm. is the one you didn't like. Right. <sighs> and it doesn't have to be cringy. It just, mm -hmm. it, it's the trend, right? You just mm -hmm. go with the trend. You, you, you still have to keep true to yourself. But yeah, do a bit of fun stuff okay, for sure. So fun stuff coming your way <laughs> soon. I'll, I'll try not to be too cringy. But you, you always look so professional in your roles. It's not like you, um, you know, cut corners when it, the the quality is professional, the content is professional, the message, and you look professional. Um, what would you say to someone just starting their social media program? Shall we say? What would your advice be to them? Be true to yourself. Mm -hmm. You don't have to, let's say, copy me, how I dress, what I do. I think authenticity is so important. Mm -hmm. And this is why now, even on TikTok, videos that are just real in some crappy apartment, yeah. you looking rough, end up doing so much better than something polished with lots Filtered. of filters. Yeah, yeah. People are tired of filters. Mm -hmm. I don't use filters at all. I'm mm -hmm. so against it. Mashallah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not because I'm pretty, but just because... <laughs> It helps. No, in general, policy. you have to be authentic. And mm -hmm. uh, one of my most favorite people on social media is Zoheb, realtor on Harley. Oh, yeah. He's so true to himself, mm -hmm. to his humor, mm -hmm. to everything he does, realtor on Harley, because he was one of the first realtors to be driving a Harley. Yeah. So make sure... Oh, but he shouldn't be calling himself a realtor. <laughs> <laughs> so that's something that I always make a reel about, but yeah. Yeah, so um, be true to yourself. People will connect with you for who you are and uh, stand out in mm. some way. Like, for example, there's a lot of real, real estate agents now who are su super popular because they speak in their own language, yeah. their own dialect. Mm. It doesn't have to be English. True. And because that you're more comfortable in that language, so do it in the And language you attract that. a different demographic of True. clients. So obviously this is advice to agents, mm -hmm. right? So if you're not an agent, you're growing a personal brand, that's different, you go, you go English. Mm. But if you want to grow this personal brand to attract clients, you could do it in another language because now there's so many agents in Dubai, everybody do, doing the same thing, right. talking about the same projects, of plan projects uh, in English. So yeah, just find a way to stand out. Mm -hmm. and, and it is tempting to just see what other people are doing and copy paste. So how do you come up with original content or ideas? Like where do you get your inspiration from? You know how TikTok works? It's mm -hmm. about copying the trend. Okay. So there's no shame and jumping on a trend that everybody is doing because that's how social media works. Okay. So for example, uh, Jordan Hisham started How Much Do You Pay For Rent in Dubai. Oh my God, that was so annoying. That was so cringy for me. The videos were going viral. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was working. Mm -hmm. And then obviously, let's say this trend died now. Now there's a new trend. So no, the advice is to, to jump on a trend, not necessarily in Dubai. Maybe mm -hmm. you saw it in US or whatever mm -hmm. and you jump on it. That's something that's trending. But then otherwise you can give advice. Questions that people want to uh, hear an answer yeah. to. Sometimes you create your own thing. Mm -hmm. But 
the advice is to have a professional team around you. Like okay. now we're sitting in a podcast somebody, mm -hmm. a studio, somebody is helping you, have an amazing yeah. team behind you. Same thing with me. I had people who come to the meeting to shoot. I don't have time to create mm -hmm. my own ideas. We have one hour, we shoot five reels, they come with ideas. Mm -hmm. Some don't do well, some do amazingly well. Mm -hmm. Some videos that I don't want to post, I'm embarrassed to post them. I don't like them, they go super viral. Yeah, yeah. so you just say yes, go with the flow, of course, if it's Post something it. that I'm totally not comfortable mm -hmm. with, no. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the, my most viral videos, it was 20 million views, was here's 20,000 dirhams, how do you spend it? Mm -hmm. And I just freestyled it. People were copying it to the extent that it was word for word wow. to what I, was, what I was saying. And even their videos were going viral. One of the best advice I heard from a super viral person, uh, viral on social media, not with <laughs> illness. <laughs> yeah. He said that if a certain trend is working for you, stop looking for something else. Continue doing that trend until it dies. Okay. This is for reels, obviously. Mm -hmm. Now we're doing long format uh, podcasts with you, mm -hmm. but for reels, keep on doing it. And what about, what's your advice on the length of the reel? Because my team are always, I'm always kind of scripting reels that go over a minute. The team are always telling me, it's too long, it's too long, make it 20 seconds or seven. And it's like, but I, I, there's so much to give. What's Let's your limit? Up. Like you do a short one, people have a very short attention span mm -hmm. and they will not watch unless it's something super interesting. And what, what are people interested in? Health, mm -hmm. how to lose weight, mm -hmm. how to make money. Mm -hmm. And if we're talking about, let's say, International Women's Day, like nobody cares, yeah. let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why, yeah, it's better to, to be short 100%. And even seconds. you can say follow for part two. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, part one and part two, that's a good one. Yeah. And you can have those also, if you've got nothing to say, you could also do one of those... Um, uh, where it's like a seven second reel of you, they call it B-roll, where it's like a behind the scenes roll, you just maybe on your laptop doing something with the audio and something that says read the caption. Yeah, and you jump on the viral aud audio that's increasing trending. Mm -hmm. uh, there's many trends that are funny. So for example, it can be quite a funny video, like a funny caption. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, in the end there's value. And somebody who wants to gain more value will read it. Yeah. And what do you think about limiting yourself in terms of do, do, do real estate agents really need to be on Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, Snapchat? Like it's too much. So if you're producing content from one platform, mm -hmm. it can be reused straight away on all other platforms. So the company I work with, they produce content based on TikTok algorithms mm -hmm. and their viral whatever things. And then that content does even better on Instagram sometimes. Okay. It does super good on YouTube shorts. Uh, LinkedIn, sometimes I don't post there, but mm. if you do post also, it does really well. Mm. You have the content, you've paid for it, put it all out there. See, I optimize for Instagram and then I repurpose to the others. So maybe I'm doing it wrong. TikTok maybe is the fastest growing platform now, right? The most mm -hmm. viral, you get the most views. So should create for TikTok, but then repurpose for the rest. And yeah, what and about YouTube shorts? Are you doing that yet? All my content is posted on all the platforms, mm -hmm. but it's the same content. Yeah. yeah. Facebook shorts, whatever it's called, YouTube shorts, Snapchat, I'm not on it. Honestly, mm -hmm. I don't have time. But you, you could even Snapchat use the same videos. Snapchat is video. shady. Yeah, shady is know. F. I don't know how to use it. Because <laughs> it's got uh, that disappearing messages thing, which I'm not doing. And then with. you can even post the same videos mm -hmm. on uh, LinkedIn. Um, I feel LinkedIn is a bit more professional. But I don't know. Uh, it will so still what? drop. Imagine okay. how nice you're like on a professional LinkedIn, long, boring articles, long, boring articles, and then mm. all of a sudden something entertaining. I would feel like, what are you doing here? You should be over on my Instagram or my TikTok. I'd be uh, like, mm. Whenever I used to <laughs> post there, uh, it, 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 did, it performs. It did well, yeah. Okay, and YouTube, that's an important one, YouTube Shorts, because YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world. So whatever you repurpose for YouTube Shorts. If you've got the right keywords in, you're gonna get even more eyeballs on your content. So if I'm, for example, a Dubai Hills agent, and I'm posting on Instagram, TikTok, why not post on YouTube Shorts with the Dubai Hills hashtag or whatever it may be to get discovered? I think the best way to get discovered on YouTube is to actually make long form videos mm. giving advice. Because okay. why do you usually end up on YouTube? Because you've got a question. How to buy a house in Dubai, yes. how to bake a potato. <laughs> I don't know, right? Like uh, how to remove a stain from my white jacket. Do you know what I asked YouTube the other day, which I didn't know the answer to. I'm gonna test to see if you know mm. the answer to this. How to figure out the dial on the inside the fridge. 
So mm -hmm. my stuff was, I had an apple juice and it was all frozen and icy inside and it was on number four. And I was like, ah, oh, am I supposed to put it on one or seven? Which oh. one is colder? I thought one is colder. You know what? I got the answer to it, but I've forgotten so it. I might have to answer. I think yes, one is so the coldest. Seven is the... Because I think that's degrees. It's one degree to seven mm. degrees. Yeah. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Okay, well, it's then degrees. they should put that on the button yeah. because I was just Exactly. Like so you're always there for uh, tutorials. Mm. Like, I don't read the manuals anymore, right? Mm -hmm. I just go on uh, YouTube and watch it. Right. Skincare. Mm -hmm. So I think if you're a Dubai Hill specialist... Um, Gary from Strada was amazing when he was doing it. He was talking about the community. Right. When is the gym opening? Mm -hmm. So you need to bring value. If you're just posting a video walkthrough of a property in Dubai Hills, like, Boring. I'm sorry, nobody cares. Yeah. People do not want to be sold to. People mm. want to be your friend. Yeah, and they want to be educated. Yes, mm -hmm. entertained. Yeah, and it, educated, entertained, and enlightened, perhaps. Yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's a really good bit of advice. And YouTube. you know, the mm -hmm. videos on YouTube, I've done like commonly asked questions uh, working in real estate. Right. One of those videos I've done four years ago, and we're still getting candidates from that video. Amazing. Okay. And once I just recorded myself on, on the phone, I don't know which camera front ways or whatever, a real estate market update that was COVID. So it was mm -hmm. like terrible quality. And I got uh, so many you views. So many hits. Mm. So mm. yeah, there's a way to search on YouTube what is trending, what subjects are trending. And... Mm. Um, uh, there's a there's a website I can't remember answerthepublic.com mm, exactly. is that the one yeah yeah where you can go and you can put a topic like Dubai real estate for example or you could say Dubai Hills mm. and you can see what the public are asking what the search terms are yeah. and answer that so that's a really good bit of advice and also what I find many people like what 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 is stopping many people from going on social media they're worried about the quality mm. or whatever like I said you can take your phone and post it. Because sometimes when I have an, a question for YouTube, I don't care what quality it was done in. Right, true. As long as I get the answer. Right, yeah. Of course, quality is important, mm. but reels now with the phones, which are just as high quality as cameras, true. there's no excuse. Right. Okay, so um, YouTube shorts, think about all the questions that your buyers are asking you frequently. If there's a question that you've been asked more than twice, then it's a common question. And right? usually it's not, what are the fees involved in buying a property? Mm -hmm. Everybody knows that. Yeah. Usually it's something much more technical. Mm -hmm. or, or specific to the area, like you said, uh, Gary, when is the gym, gym opening? opening yeah. yeah. Or for example, everybody talks about golden visa when you spend, I don't know, two million dirhams. We know, we, everybody Did knows Did anybody that. say, how do you get a golden visa? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do, do, do a tour, this is an amazing idea. Guys, do you want to get your golden visa? You just bought a property, here's how you do it. Go to the Dubai Land Department, mm -hmm. show this cube or whatever, mm -hmm. do the step-by-step -step process. Mm -hmm. How much value does that bring? Yeah. Rather than just saying, oh, oh did you, can you get know? it? And nobody <laughs> knows how. Yeah. These agents who are saying it you mm. do not know how you go and apply for this visa. Mm, mm, okay. And now, what about hashtags and topics? Oh, I'm, I'm and not an expert and the in this. Oh, no? I still do the hashtags, but mm -hmm. some people would say you can even put the hashtags in the comments. Some people say hashtags don't matter, mm. like just the viral sound matters. So honestly, I'm not an expert in do that. Do you have any indication of what the algorithm is doing these days? Like, are you noticing any trend I'm when it comes to... I'm a real estate guru, not an Instagram guru. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, have you picked that, like, what is doing better than others from your content? My content, honestly, if it's, like, entertaining or controversial. Mm -hmm. Your most viral and, reel? And also, like, my most viral recent reel is because I wanted to do something different from real estate because mm -hmm. there's too much like property tours, et cetera. So mm -hmm. I decided to go to the Deira fish market. Oh yeah, this was hilarious. Yeah, but at the same time, like I think a lot of people gain value from it, even mm -hmm. if they don't agree. Because we're so like, we're in such a bubble here in Dubai Marina, Palm, You or don't whatever. even know there's a fish market. We don't know. <laughs> and the prices, I swear, they're so much cheaper. Mm -hmm. So I just went there to try something new and those videos went so viral. Mm -hmm. And people like them. <laughs> And on purpose, I wear like a suit just to like yeah. stand out. Like, what, what is she doing wearing a suit, you know? In a fish market, that was hilarious. Check out that reel. Yeah, so like one of my ideas was to try and talk more about Dubai mm -hmm. because then people who are new to Dubai, they will start watching, yeah. you know what I mean? And then when they think to buy a property on my fifth post when I'm actually selling, mm. they'll be like, oh, they'll wow, I didn't even know she does real estate. Yeah, yeah. And because it is harder now for real estate agents to stay out of trouble because you have to now display the QR code at the beginning, at the middle end of each reel. If you're and doing a property tour. And weren't you the one tour. saying that you never watch my property tours? 
Who said that? Did you say that time we were at dinner? No, I think it was... Um, but it doesn't matter. But yeah. you don't watch a property tour. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I don't watch a property tour. Mm-hmm. But when it's something different, you do watch it. Yeah, but there, you, maybe like 10 years ago, remember there was that obsession with through the keyhole and looking at celebrity houses and stuff. Mm. Do you think everyone's exhausted by that now? You don't really want to see things that are perhaps out of reach anymore. Just too much in Dubai. Too much. Um, yeah. Too much. Every, and everybody's showing the same house. Mm, mm. And, and that's where, you know, my best videos on TikTok were when I was doing a tour as if it's a client who's super picky. Mm-hmm. And it, so it was more like comedy. Yeah. We are showing the property, but the, the agent who was like acting like a client, like being picky, oh my God, it's too small. Mm. Oh my God, it's too this. Mm-mm. And that did well because there's entertainment in it. But look at the number. And, and one of the videos on TikTok, my highest one is 27 million views Wow! because of that. Mm. But then look at any pretty video, how many views it gets. Mm. 10,000 if they're lucky. <laughs> it's, it's so hard to be an influencer. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not. It's just about being consistent mm. and knowing the small tricks. People think, oh, I'll post a few reels and I'll, I'll go viral. I've been doing this since 2019. Mm. And there was many times when it, it, it became stagnated. I've changed content creators many times as well mm. because you need to keep up with the trend. Keep fresh. Okay. What about comments? You ever had any nasty comments and do you keep them or do you delete them? What do you do? We just with had them? a discussion behind the scenes. <laughs> I like the advice is not to read the comments. I think that's a very, very good really? advice. Really? Oh, no, I couldn't not. No, because I, I thought before that if you start engaging, mm-hmm. it, it pushes your reel like more. This is, is why I used to reply to everybody. Well, I don't know. So I think if it goes really viral, then mm-hmm. like the lady behind the scenes said, she said that they will fight between themselves. <laughs> okay, so that's great. So you don't have to respond to every comment yeah. or don't feel the need mm. to respond to every comment because your fan base or your following will respond on your behalf or they'll come in and, you know, team a bit like what's it called? Uh, Taylor Swift, like a bunch mm-hmm. of Swifties yeah, will yeah, come yeah. into your defense. So Or just continuing, like, let's say, saying nasty things about me, but between each other. Mm. Like one of the reels I've done recently is when you park your car, you go out and you take a photo of the parking spot, yes. like how to park in Dubai. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's a trend. And I double parked on purpose. I'm like, let's double park. Yeah. Like some haters will come in. I underestimate how many haters will come really? in. Really? Because you're parking like an... <laughs> yeah, but like people know. Mm-hmm. Like the smart people are like, come on guys, it's just content. The, the video, it was such a simple video, reached 5 million views. Mm. And there was a lot of, yeah, a lot of hate hate there. And that's funny because our mutual friend, Zayn Nahori as Mm. well, she did one where Mm. she got a lot of abuse from um, uh, cabin crew and uh, aviation industry. Mm -hmm. She did one about, remember being in business class Mm -hmm. seats, what difference does it make reclining the seat? You know when they say, we're about to to land, Mm -hmm. put your seat back in position. And she got so many comments from... Mm-hmm. cabin crew and saying it's for your safety and you know just follow one That's instruction yeah, yeah. Um, and actually I learned something from that that it's because the seat doesn't lock mm-hmm. if it's reclined if there is an impact it's not locked so it's actually for your safety but, and but you should not be worried about the negative comments you will get mm-hmm. because like okay not every publicity is good publicity but it doesn't matter like it's social media be prepared mm. but the, the love i get from my followers and the benefit i get from my followers outweighs. Over, outweighs it by a mile okay so let's go back a few steps with personal branding mm. because you must have decided this is what my personal brand is going to represent this is how i want to come across what's the kind of five part checklist would you say for your personal brand or that people need to nail for the personal branding to be honest, um, I used to, like I said, I used to model. So when I started my journey when I was 21, I got my first modeling headshot. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, why don't I use it in the email signatures? Mm-hmm. So I was the first person in Dubai real estate to I use a it. photo on the email signature. Okay. And then people started following, uh, like copying. And I used to go to Dubai Land Department. That's where all the transfers used to happen. And people were like, Alicia from Dacia, Alicia from Dacia. We see your face on the email. <laughs> but it's crazy mm. because we used to mass email each other in the Dubai industry mm. to get hot properties across, you mm-hmm. know. And that was my first step wow. to personal branding. Mm-hmm. And then like for sale boards and stuff, we started putting the faces. It, it was not a thing in Dubai before. Mm. First step to personal brand. And then, of course, to have like a professional headshot. Uh, but then in terms of like actual things that I'm doing, my, my personal brand just keeps on evolving. Mm. Like, I, like I said, I, as soon as I see that it's not working, I sw- switch things up. Okay. But I'm always true to myself. I would never do something that's not comfortable for okay. me. Okay, good. Okay, right. 
Do you have a checklist? You're I, building I, your personal brand. So, so my maybe personal you can brand, I'm very share. much kind of, like, like you said, mm -hmm. or trying to be authentically me because that's the only thing that I can keep up. If you're pretending to be something you're not, the, the facade will soon fall off and it's just not going to feel genuine. Um, I was very clear on what colors were going to represent my brand. Um, and I've stuck to that. We could ha have a rebrand at, at some point, but for now I'm yellow, gray, um, and black. And then I decided what fonts I'm going to use for my content. And we went with a font called Anton and Poppins and Georgia for my emails. So even down to, like mm -hmm. you said, your yeah. emails, I have a signature, um, a signature font that I use. So when people see it, they feel mm -hmm. like, oh, that's a Sylvia email. Wow. Um, I have a signature tone as well. So I don't try to sound super professional, super formal. I don't want to sound like, I don't want anyone to ever look and think, did chat GPT write that? No, this is my language. This is how I would speak to you. So I'm, I, I make sure that comes through in my um, captions and, and, and the things that I say. And I think, that's about it, really, when it comes to personal branding. And, ah, oh, no, shoes. Shoes is a big thing. So shoes is my kind of, not focal point, mm -hmm. but I'm obsessed with shoes. Mm -hmm. I'm a Carrie Bradshaw at heart. <laughs> and, um, and actually, a lot of people started saying to me that they tune in to see what shoes I'm oh. wearing. You know, so I was like, oh, OK. Mm, sponsorship deals, Manolo Blahnik, please. Uh, these are Manolo Blahniks, right? These are Manolos. You've got Louboutin. I mean, or look, Christian Louboutin, we, well, honestly, we're not fussy. Um, anything that is we in... We are fussy. Anything that's in Dubai... As long Dubai as it's 3,000 dirhams at the pub. Fashion Avenue. As long as you have a store in Fashion Avenue section of Dubai Mall, we're not fussy. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a hundred millimeter stiletto and up. Mm, that's okay. it. Um, <laughs> yeah. So that's my personal brand. I'm about the heels. I'm about the, um, the, I don't know. That's, yeah. That's I just went with the flow. <laughs> <laughs> your, your center parting glasses. Mm -hmm. You do have a brand, you know, you've got to look and you yeah, stick to it. That's and, just my style. Um, yeah. And if you one day did a reel with the side parting, you would throw me off. <laughs> you would throw me off. I would be like, mm, bless you. <laughs> um, okay. Right, let's go back to a li mm -hmm. little bit to real estate. We've kind of, yeah, I mean, it's still yeah, but real estate, media, but social yeah. media is a big part of real estate, actually. And I have a question for you. Do you think that, let's say there's an agent out there that is like, no, not interested, not going to do it. Are they going to be made extinct at some point? Are we seeing... Personal brand. Mm, well, personal brand, social media. Are we seeing, are we about to see the extinction of real estate agents that are not operating on social media? I don't think so. And whenever I have new joiners join, I always give them a talk about personal brand. I say that your most important thing that you should focus on right now are your listings. Mm -hmm. So the listings that you get on Property Finder, et cetera, because that's where your client leads will come from. Mm. And there's still a lot of people who are not on social media. Yeah. A lot of people in their 50s, a lot of men are not on social media. Mm. They're not interested. And they're still closing deals. Yeah, or clients, mm. I mean, like, you know, like, for example, true, my true. father, he is, he's quite wealthy, let's mm -hmm. say. You think he's interested in social media? No. But I bet you what he does check, he probably checks WhatsApp status updates. Yes, and that's what I said. I said, guys, you need to do the WhatsApp status updates. One of my clients that I'd done business with 10 years ago mm -hmm. remembered me by my WhatsApp status, yeah. and he just called me and said, I want to buy a property, mm -hmm. just because of that, because yeah. you're in people's face. Because those people that don't use social media, mm -hmm. TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, they rely on WhatsApp status updates. So post a picture... Just yeah. any random picture now. Test no, it for yourself. No, but just not, not another launch, please. You know, when everybody starts posting the same, like, yeah. launch brochure? Oh, gosh, yeah. That's when they will stop opening your status yeah. updates. and they'll put you on mute or whatever it is. Um, so I think there's a client, like, each agent has their own style, and mm -hmm. they will find their clients through networking because they can go to, let's say, I don't know, arts club or something and yeah. find their network, right? Or they can already come with a network. So mm. I say if you're not passionate about, about social media, it takes up so much time, so mm. much effort. Do not focus on it to begin with. Yeah, okay. And a lot of our agents were super successful. They don't... They They're don't not operating. Anything. Okay, well, that's reassuring. The lady you were talking to me about uh, recently, is she mm. active on social media? Actually, she's one of the top sure. agents in her company. And... Okay. She, I mean, she has a, a, a big social media following, oh, she does, but yeah. she's not, uh, she doesn't create real. She mm. doesn't, you know, she posts a lot more family stuff behind the scenes and funny con like stories. She's more in the stories. Yeah, she yeah. doesn't have that many posts, yeah. but she 
But I'm um, sure her clients are not coming from that. Like, yeah. see, like she, you said, she's so successful. I don't even yeah. know about her. Yeah, yeah. And also, sometimes people are so active on social media, they forget to actually do jobs. Actually, sell fucking <laughs> houses. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's true. It's true. So don't get too caught up no. in um, social media. For me, media. it's super important because I have a company of 100 plus employees mm. and I owe it to them to push the brand. Mm. Like you said, every single person in the company benefits from yeah. it. So in a way, you're handling the yes. social media for all your yeah. agents. Come to Dasha. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So we asked, well, we told social media that you were coming on the show and we asked them to give us questions oh, okay. for you. And I have... Two good questions. Mm -hmm. um, Vrazamovsky <laughs> asked, how does it feel like to manage a successful agency? <laughs> how does it feel like? It's, you, know what I, well, you know what I realized? It's never enough. Mm -hmm. You might be so successful. And if I look back at myself 10, 15 years ago, I'd be like, wow, I wouldn't believe that I have like, such yeah. a big company now. But now looking at myself in the current state, I don't feel like it's enough. I want more. More and more. I want yeah. more. I feel like, of course, I'm looking at the bigger competitors and mm -hmm. I respect them so much. And this is what I want. So what I feel every single day is that I want more. I want to become better. I want more growth. I want more and more and but more. But does that ever end? Because I don't think it ever ends. No, because like you could get to the stage where, OK, you're the best in Dubai. Then what? You start looking at the best in the world. And, the, you know, it's and I think that's what makes successful people successful. They're mm -hmm. so driven. Even a uh, business apart, I always want to improve myself. Mm. Like I, I always take care of my you know, skin, fitness, health. Like I think we can become better every single day. Mm -hmm. And that's, wh that's what like, life is okay. for. <laughs> Just to be better than, uh, better the than the yesterday yes. you. Yeah, OK. Be um, better than you were yesterday. And then we have Ben Wilson, who is. Uh, but I didn't answer how do, how do I feel. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Well, you. We, it sounds like you're not satisfied. Yeah, <laughs> you exactly. want yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so go back to how does it make you feel? How does it make me feel? Oh my God! Now back to things. <laughs> yeah. So how does it make me feel? It just makes me want to push more. Makes mm -hmm. me want to work harder. Makes me want to do better. Mm -hmm. Of course, of course, I'm happy and I'm proud. And by the way, it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. People might think, oh, I'm just on social media, but I do so much behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. I'm so hands on. I feel every pain point of every person if they mm -hmm. lose a deal mm -hmm. or anybody else like in management is suffering through something. So honestly, it, it is it is a, a big job. It is mm -hmm. stressful. And uh, like the stress, I think people underestimate and they just assume you know, okay, you, you're running a successful company, you're making millions, um, all of that's going into your pocket, I hate you've got staff that, at yeah. home, but they don't understand. The bigger your company gets, the bigger your, more money, more problems. Notorious B.I.G. said it. The, the more people, <laughs> the more money, the more problems, the more exposure you have financially as mm. well. Mm. So the risks are much greater. Yeah. So yeah, okay. I, it, it, it's cool, but it's stressful. <laughs> <laughs> right. OK. And then Ben Wilson, who is um, he's in the UK. Mm -hmm. He's moving to an agent. He started following me because of someone else mm -hmm. I interviewed before. Mm -hmm. But he he's moving in April to work for another brokerage. Mm -hmm. But he wants your best advice for a new broker relocating to Dubai. Ben, I'm talking to you. <laughs> I think it's quite important to start with a bigger company who do have the training and development in place because I've met so many agents. If the first company they start with in Dubai is not the right fit, mm -hmm. they lose money within the first month even because lose you come money. with savings. Lose momentum. You lose mm -hmm. the trust in mm -hmm. the industry. Mm -hmm. You Yeah, you lose your motivation. Yeah. So if you start in a company that you know has the correct training, that you gel well with the manager, that's mm -hmm. also super important, that have a good team around, that's the first key to success. Mm. But then the second key to success is just to keep on working. The first six months are so difficult. Right. People think they will come and it's going to be so easy. Beach forget clubs and Yeah, this forget and about that. Mm. Like, honestly, one, somebody joined us recently. And on a Sunday, he's asking, where's a good place to party today? Oof. A Sunday. Yeah. And the manager said, party Sunday. Don't come to work on Monday. Sack Tuesday. Wow. Yeah. It's true, though. Yeah, yeah. Don't come with that kind of party no. mentality. And the best mm. brokers who succeed, they are, they're new to Dubai. First one's in, last one's out, yeah. grinding on the weekends. Mm. And it, 
the results might not even show in the first month and the second month, mm. but then they will all start falling into place. And within six months, you can start making huge yeah. amounts of money. And then you can start living the dream, yes. but don't immediately come over and think, okay, I've got to post for the people back home. That's mm. what people do. They know, oh, I moved to Dubai. They're expecting big things from me. I've got to be at the beach this weekend, or I've got to be. Post that the you're grafting. Mm. Post that you're in the office on the sa uh, yeah. Saturday or on a Sunday. True. True. That's, uh, that's what's going to make your family much more proud. Mm. That's true. Okay, so Ben is not coming over for another month. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice for him to make use of this next month before he gets here? What I think the he fact doing? that you will be launching a training program mm -hmm. is so great because I think if brokers had the access to the training materials in advance, they could already start preparing. Yes. But That's right now, idea. for example, you said Mark Castley launched the book. Mm -hmm, he can start mm -hmm. reading such bo such books. Firas has a book. Yeah. Like basically Anthony um, and AJ. Yes, you yeah. can start reading those books, watching the channels of those people to start educating yourself mm -hmm. more. And podcasts as exactly. well. Exactly. Like yeah. you, so you've you're, launched so well, many podcasts. Well, if you're podcasts. listening this podcast, just search Dubai Real Estate Podcast or even Real Estate Podcast. There's been great guy, Tom Panos. I really, I prefer to follow Dubai people. Like my okay. favorite right now is Mark Castley. He gives mm -hmm. so much like advice but does everyone get his accent though i mean i'm british i can get the scouse accent <laughs> I, I'm, I'm i work with a bunch of british i'm married to yeah. a british man so i don't, I don't have a problem mm -hmm. like you know for me that's like I, i've told all my brokers and mm -hmm. even though he's a competitor i said follow, follow him, him. Mm -hmm. the advice is every day an amazing advice he, i don't know i guess his driver is driving him to, mm. to the office i hope so <laughs> and yeah and he's like recording yeah. such amazing advice mm -hmm. that some other managers and companies would not want to share with true, competitors true. So one question I always ask my guests is, and you've already answered the first two, which is how to get started, how to get noticed. The third and fourth I would like to ask you, so how, what would your advice be to someone to get results in real estate? I think it's quite important to get results faster because I think it's so demotivating coming to work every day knowing you're not getting paid mm -hmm. and that you're eating into your savings right. and you're working so hard and you don't see a result. So that's where we start all our new starters with no prior experience in rentals. Mm -hmm. And I think with, if you're a good agent and you're meant to succeed, you should close a rental in your first month. Mm -hmm. So listen to the advice that your management is going to be giving you because you are in it together. Obviously, you're like on a 50-50 commission split or whatever. You're basically a partner with them. Yeah. They will make money when you make money. So the advice they give you is usually right based right. on many years of experience. Mm -hmm. Rentals or an area maybe that's not very competitive, to, to get started yeah, to like get a lot experience. of people might immediately think oh, I want to be a downtown I want to be yeah yeah I straight to, to Emirates Hills, Hills. it's like okay. <laughs> what mm. do something that's less competitive mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and maybe where the brokers are of a lower caliber even to just understand the process you will sell you will rent you'll understand how things work mm. and maybe somebody who owns something in Damak Hills too as an example also has many other properties elsewhere true it's just getting your foot through the door mm, mm. so uh yeah, start with rentals. Those landlords will become your sellers, your buyers, your investors. Mm -hmm. uh, most of our top agents started in rentals. They did rentals for at least six months, and then, yeah, they had a huge they portfolio of clients. To sales. Okay. And lastly, how to go about getting referred? Because you want to be an agent who's not reliant on uh, portal leads or cold calling or whatever it is to get business. So how do you become the agent that is the go-to? Do you yeah. know how? The question, uh, it's such an easy answer. Oh, tell me. Ask the question. Nobody asks the question. For example, I train with a personal trainer and I would not even think about referring her or anything like this. And she said, Alicia, I have space for two more clients. If you have any clients in mind, let me know. Right. I said, oh, let me just post you in the story. Yeah. Guess what? She From got asking the question, she, she got, got 20 clients. clients probably, yeah. Mm. Just by me posting a simple thing on the story. Mm. Same thing. Tell your clients, Sylvia, if you like my service and if you have any friends in the future looking to buy or rent, mm -hmm. please do not forget about me. Yeah. Add your birthday. He's going to have your passport, mm. he or she. Mm -hmm. Add the birthday in the calendar. I always give that bit of Nobody advice. does yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I swear, out I of, I don't know, a thousand agents that I had in Dacia, one guy used to do it. Mm. You know how it makes you stand out? Yeah. If you Imagine if you birthday. send something mm. on the birthday. Mm. But the most important thing is ask the question. Okay, ask for the business. Ask for the business. You know, every th you see now, um, you hear, it, well, it's called call to action mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. So everything has a CTA. Anything that you look, you're looking at, whether it be an uh, uh, in Instagram post or whatever, there's always a call to action at the end, like uh, subscribe or like for more or whatever it is. So you have to have a personal call to action, which is 
recommend me and to sometimes it's difficult to ask that right yeah yeah but if it you sounds do, like begging but yeah but you shouldn't put yeah. your pride away you know what mm. a lot of the agents fail because they're too proud ego yeah and especially once they start making big money their mm. ego becomes so big the wealthy clients don't like them mm -mm. the wealthy client will want to deal with an agent who is More humble. new mm -hmm. humble he knows that if this guy sells uh, like if the, uh, the agent buys a property through him It the money will life. mean something yeah, yes yeah drop the ego drop the attitude somebody one agent started with us he's no longer with us he said oh i'm planning to rent a lamborghini euros to go on the viewings i said are you joking you're going to be going to client viewings in lamborghini euros mm. it's funny because when i was um, um in the uk managing a team there was one super super successful agent and he refused to get like a mercedes or a bmw he wanted the shitty car And I was like, why have you never, <laughs> like, you're making a lot of money. Why have you never thought about upgrading? He's like, nah, need my clients to feel like I need the business. So, <laughs> so he insisted on not upgrading 100%. his. Um, and then Dubai, the mm. agents become too big headed. Yeah. So don't uh, ask the question and whether, you know, if they have any friends. But most important, they also do the good job. Yeah. So they do want to refer yeah. you. And a lot of agents are so focused on closing the deal, they forget about the customer service. Mm -mm. So. <laughs> And then, and then, so one of our best brokers, she's amazing. She does so many deals each month. Clients love her. Mm. They always come back to her, give her the deals back. She's so customer service centric. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the reasons why a lot of cabin crew, crew, crew became real estate and agents. And became, became very so successful, yes. yeah. Or people from hospitality right. when COVID hit, right? A lot of them lost their jobs. Mm -hmm. Because they, they know care. how to give service. They know how to care. They know how to, you know, when, when you're in, or on the plane, The cabin crew, they come, they lower down to your level. They make yeah. you feel really comfortable. That's what you need to be doing. And imagine, like, mm. let's say, I hate using CEO as my title, but let's say, or the boss. Mm -hmm. But I'm the boss of the company, let's say, and whenever I have to go speak to clients, I kiss their butt, sorry mm -hmm. to say. Mm -hmm. I make them feel special. So special, Because yeah. their business is important to me, mm -hmm. and I don't want to upset them. I don't want to lose the business. Mm -hmm. But sometimes brokers are just like, you don't want it? It's okay. Yeah. If you're not coming with a check, don't come. Mm -hmm. And don't be flashy, don't be flat like Ben, Ben Wilson, don't come out with your fake Rolex <laughs> thinking that that's going to make a difference, you know. To the clients it yeah. doesn't. Might might make a difference on your first date or something, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. not to the client for oh, sure. But you might be attracting the wrong kind of girl, Ben. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anything else to wrap up? This is a very enlightening yeah. episode, um, <laughs> Alessia. To wrap up, the golden nuggets. Yes, I've got to, to advise several. to real estate agents. <laughs> Any more advice? I think to all agents, experienced or not, I think this was really good. Drop the ego. Yeah. If you're new, stay focused, work hard. And if you do have time and you like social media, build your personal brand. And follow Alessia. Yeah. <laughs> Fear not. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. And that's a wrap. We're going to just ask you to subscribe to the channel. That's my only CTA. Thank <laughs> you very much. Bye.